Here I've got the open project for the final code over here, and you can see that what we don't have yet in our project is this little section with recent expenses. Now, just to simplify things for now, we're just going to show the name, the amount, and the date. We'll leave these two for a later video, but I do want these to be actually output on the home page. So let's come back over to our active project over here. You can see we got our expenses showing, or our budgets showing, but we don't have any expenses yet. So I'm going to come over to the dashboard, and just below all of this stuff, you can see right here is where we're looping through our budgets, and then below the budgets, I want to loop through our expenses. Now the only trouble here is I don't actually have access to my expenses yet because we never got those from our loader function. We've been kind of holding off on those. We did get our budgets and our username, but we have not gotten our expenses yet. And let's go ahead and pull it in here. And then I also need to grab it actually in my loader function. So if I head up top here to my loader function, which again will be loaded every time I hit this route, then I also need to grab in addition to budgets and username, I need to grab expenses. And then I also need to return those so I can actually get them in my use loader data. Okay, so I should get access to those now, which means I can come below here. And here, I actually just want to loop through and make sure, first of all, that I actually have expenses. So expenses, assuming those are the case, then I want to check that it's not just an empty array, because at first it won't, it may not be there at all. Then it may pass back an empty array. Now what I want to check is if expenses dot length is greater than zero. If all that's the case, then let's just go ahead and return some JSX. Now this will be a grid medium like this, so a div with a class of grid medium on it. And this will say recent expenses. Just to make sure this is working, let's make sure we can see it. Yeah, down there. Okay, perfect. And then here, I'm going to create a custom component called table. So table like this. Right now, this doesn't exist yet, but it will eventually. And let's see, it can be self-closing because we're going to pass in all the props it needs. So let's try this again. Table like that, self-closing. Okay, so it should yell because it's not yet defined. Uh, let's come over here and define it. So table.jsx. And then let's go ahead and get a basic template out. We'll come back over here and then let's just go up top here, copy this last component down, and then change these both to table. Now, whenever I select two things like that, I'm always using Command D just to select both of them, one after the other. You can kind of keep tapping it, and it will just continue to select things. So that's how I'm doing that. I've mentioned that a couple times, but uh, I forget sometimes to mention it when I do it. Okay. Now, there are a couple things I want to be passed down to this table. The first one, and probably the most important one, is the expenses. Now, I can do this in a couple ways. I can just pass expenses and then handle the sorting and all that kind of stuff in the actual table component. I think in this case, I'll just go ahead and just do it right here. So let's take the expenses, and I want to sort over these. In this case, what I want to do is grab A and B, and I want to return them kind of in reverse order. So B.createdAt, you might remember those, just like the budgets, they have that same property on them, minus A.createdAt. So that should be passed down to my table component. Now this div itself, I actually want to have a class name of table. This will essentially let us have overflow on the table on smaller screen sizes since normal tables, like we're gonna use right here, don't have that kind of styling by default. Inside here though, I need a table head. This will be kind of the, for the header row, and then we'll have a table row inside of here. We'll come back to this in a second, but for now let's come down below the table head, and we're gonna now add a table body. Here we're gonna take the expenses, we're gonna map over each expense. For each of these expenses here, I'm going to return a table row, which needs a key since I'm mapping over it, which will be its expense.id. That should be unique for each of them. And then inside each of these rows, I want to pass in a new component we're going to write called expense item. For now, let's just go ahead and comma that out so it doesn't get angry with us. Uh, we can just maybe say something like uh, expense.name for now. Okay, so I've got this in here. Here's where I need to actually add all the table rows, but let's just come down here and make sure that something's happening. Yeah, we've got expense.name for each of those. So what I want to do next is add a table header area that'll have all of our different things we need. And we can do this in a couple different ways, but since we're already using React and it's pretty easy to template over things, let's just create a, an array right here. So the titles are going to be name, uh, amount, date, and then we'll eventually have a couple other things as well, but for now we'll just start with that. Now these shouldn't really change, so I'm just going to map over them, and not only am I going to grab the individual item, but I'll also grab the index as well, which shouldn't be a huge deal for something like this, because I just need something that I can use as, as a key. Each of these cells in here will be a table header, and the actual content will be whatever the item is I'm looping over, and the key will be my index. 
So if I save it here, you see I get three different rows. Uh, these are the kind of the header sections. And we're gonna do something very similar here now with the expense item. So once again, I'm gonna jump out here to my components and create another one. We'll call this expense item.jsx. And we'll just template this out again. Now if I come back to my table and I uncomment this, and let's try to see if it'll get us that auto import. There we go. So it should pull it in up top here. And this is just a component import. So we've passed in these expenses to the table. Now we're gonna basically loop through them. And for each of them, we're gonna pass them to the expense item. So we're gonna have it taken an expense and that will just be the expense. All right, so whatever thing we're looping through, let's get rid of this name right here. That means I can come over here and I can destructure here the expense from the props. Now this will eventually be way more complicated, but for now we're going to make sure that this is not passing in any kind of container wrapper because I want each of these to be a table data. And what I want inside the first one should be the expense.name like we had earlier. I'll copy this down next, I want the amount. So that would be expense.amount. If I save it here, you're gonna see it just gives me raw numbers. So I actually wanna wrap this in that same helper function. So I'll grab all this and say format currency, and that should pull that in, and then I pass it my amount. And now I'm getting actual dollar figures. So I'll come in here, we'll say like helper imports. And then the next thing I need is just what the date is. So once again, I can come in here and I can grab on here the expense.created at. Now that's just gonna give me an epoch time. If I spell it correctly, there we go. So that's not super helpful. So we actually need to format that in some kind of way. Once again, let's go ahead and write a helper function. So I'll open up my helpers and this one's super quick and easy, just like those other ones, but we'll say const, uh, let's call it a format date to local string. What we're gonna do is turn this epoch that we're passing in the epoch number that's what we set the created at property to when we created the expense or created the budget. What I want to do is set that here to a new date where I'll pass in the epoch. And then I'll simply say to locale date string, which is a method that lives on dates. Now I'm making this an implicit return, which means whenever I pass in an epoch, it should turn it into a date, then send this back to me. So I'm going to save this and grab this right here, come back to our expense item. And now all I need to do is add this in here. So if I start to type it, hopefully, let's see, let's, let's, let's let it do it for us. There we go. All right, then I'm gonna wrap all of this and expense created at. Now I'm actually getting, however my current place signifies a date. Now, if you're in the UK, this would be 6-2 or somewhere else that formats dates that way. But I'm letting your locale set that based on whatever date you put this in. And you can see I'm doing this tutorial here on February 6th. All right, so let's walk through this one more time just to make sure that that makes sense. I'm gonna come over to my dashboard. We know that our loader function up here is gonna grab our username, our budgets, and our expenses and return all of those down. And then we're gonna get access to them with a hook from React Red or DOM called Use Loader Data. I'm looping through each expense down here below, assuming that I have any and that I have more than one. It's going to show me my recent expenses and then pass everything down to a table sorted from basically when I created it. This table itself is gonna take these things in. It's gonna create a header row with these things that I want, these header kind of sections. And then it's gonna map through all the rest of these in the body. Each table row will be an expense item. Each expense item over here is gonna have three data items. The name, the currency that's formatted, and the local date of when it was created that's formatted. Now there's been something that's been bugging me for quite a while now, and that is I actually wanna make sure that when I delete the user, all the expenses, all the budgets all get deleted. And now that we're pulling in the budgets and the expenses now, we can go ahead and delete them all when we click our button up here to delete user data. Let me show you what's happening right now. So if I open this up and refresh so that whatever errors we had are gone, I can come in here, you can see we've got expenses, username and budgets. Now if I click this and I click okay, now the username is gone, but all these things are still here. So if I come back here and say like, my name is Joe now, suddenly I've got all this stuff here, even though of course I hadn't done anything. All right, so we need to get rid of all those things. So let's open up our logout action over here. And what I wanna do is delete the item of username, also of budgets and also of expenses. So let's try this again. And this time, if I get rid of Joe, it should get rid of everything. And that's exactly what it does, which means I can now come in here and say, Chris, and once it decides to create a, an account, you see, this is what's showing up. 
Now, the reason it's taking such a long time and I double clicked it there um, is because if I come over here, let's open up our helpers. We created this kind of fake waiter. Let's not make it wait possibly two seconds. That's way too long. Let's do just a little under a second, perhaps. You'll do notice, you will do you did notice that I actually got two notifications there because it let me submit that form twice. And if I come back over here to the, and if I come back over here to the intro, you might remember that we're just using this form and we're not actually making this thing disabled at all like we did on the other forms. So that might be something you want to do, but I'll leave that to you. In this case, I clicked it twice and I had no way to disable it. So it submitted it twice and that's why I got two notifications. Now in the next video, what I want to do is create an expenses page. And what we'll do is anytime we have more than maybe eight expenses, we'll show a link that opens up a page that shows all of the expenses. That way my homepage here doesn't have like 5 billion expenses down below. It just shows the most recent ones and then links out to the rest. So that's what we're going to do in the next video.